Japanese police and the Coast Guard have conducted a large-scale anti-terrorism drill at a nuclear power plant in Fukushima. About 150 personnel participated in the drill at the Fukushima Daini plant. The plant is about 10 kilometers from the Daiichi facility crippled in the 2011 disaster. The exercise was based on the scenario that terrorists were attacking the plant. The participating groups included a spe special uh, police attack team and Coast Guard anti-terrorism forces. In the scenario, terrorists tried to approach the nuclear plant from the sea. The Coast Guard seized their boat and arrested them. Police forces exchanged fire with terrorists who used a car to burst through the front gate of the plant. Officers wearing radiation suits captured the assailants. National police agency officials say the possibility of terrorists targeting nuclear plants has increased following the Fukushima Daiichi accident. Police and other security organizations plan to continue working together to prepare for such attacks. Japanese police have deployed vehicles in Tokyo and Fukushima that are radiation proof. They say the cars will protect them in the event of a terrorist attack on a nuclear plant. Officers with the National Police Agency say the two cars are protected by lead shields. Engineers pressurize the interiors to prevent radioactive substances from being drawn in. And the vehicles are equipped with sensors to monitor radiation levels. The cost? $1.5 million. Officers say they'll mobilize the cars in the event of a nuclear accident or a terrorist attack. They say the cars will protect them from radiation while they try to help residents or look for terrorists. Officers say the accident in Fukushima two years ago made them more aware of the possibility of attacks on nuclear facilities. Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, plans to complete the transfer of radioactive water from leaking underground storage pools to tanks above ground at the Fukushima Daiji nuclear plant early in June. A series of leaks of highly contaminated water have been found since April 5th in some of the underground storage pools. TEPCO decided to stop using the pools and move all of the 23,000 tons of water to tanks. About 7,000 tons of contaminated water from the number one and two pools has already been transferred without trouble. The utility company plans to install more tanks which can accommodate about 19,000 tons of water to complete the transfer. The underground pools continue to leak during the operation. The utility pumps the leaked, pumps the leaked water back to the pools to minimize the environmental impact. It continues to monitor underground water at 30 wells around and on the seaside of the plant. No contamination of groundwater has been detected yet. Experts at Japan's nuclear watchdog are trying to answer some of the questions that remain about the 2011 nuclear accident in Fukushima. They plan to incorporate their findings into new safety standards for nuclear plants. Nuclear Regulation Authority staff held an initial meeting with outside experts. Their inquiry follows investigations by the government, the Diet, and plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO. Their probe will look at the impact of the earthquake on Fukushima Daiichi, how fuel rods melted, and how radioactive material made it into the environment. The panel is also trying to find out why water leaked in the Reactor 1 building immediately after the quake. TEPCO engineers said water from a spent fuel pool trickled down through the reactor's cooling system. Experts want to study whether the quake disabled the system or if pressure from the leaked water was to blame. They're aiming to nail down as many facts as possible within this investigation, which will include on-site surveys, but they won't be able to see everything they want because radiation levels in many parts of the plant are still dangerously high. Japanese officials are seeking to increase safety at the country's nuclear power plants. Currently, only the Nuclear Regulation Authority is responsible for nuclear plant safety. But the government is considering setting up a new organization that would involve the power companies. Japan's trade and industry minister Toshimitsu Motegi says experts from the various power utilities would draw up measures to deal with problems Thank after examining the facilities. Motegi says the government wants to review the energy policy of the previous government. It had set a goal of shutting down all nuclear power plants in the next 20 years. Japan has to rely about 90% of energy demand on fossil fuels. 
we import all of them from overseas. It certainly is not sustainable. There are only two out of 50 nuclear reactors in the country still in operation since the accident in Fukushima. The demand for imported liquefied natural gas used at Japan's thermal power plants has surged ever since. Motegi says the government plans to allow utilities to restart plants once safety is verified. Eight out of ten Japanese electric power companies have reported losses for the business year that ended in March. A sharp rise in the cost of fuel for thermal power generation has cut deep into their earnings. All utilities, with the exception of Hokuriku and Okinawa, were in the red. Four of them posted record losses. Kyushu, about $3.4 billion. Kansai, nearly $2.5 billion. Hokkaido, more than $1.3 billion. And Shikoku, about $440 million. TEPCO's loss came to over $7 billion. It's the company's third straight loss since the nuclear plant accident in Fukushima in 2011. TEPCO and others were forced to switch to thermal power generation after the accident. The total fuel cost for the eight utilities that announced losses surged more than $11.5 billion from the previous year. TEPCO raised its electricity rates last September, and many others are following that move. The rate hikes are expected to hurt Japanese companies as well as consumers. Tokyo Electric Power Company could be considered one of the most criticized firms in Japan. It runs a damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Since the accident there, TEPCO managers have earned a reputation for putting profit before safety and withholding key information. But they're trying to change their corporate culture by reaching out to foreign experts. NHK World's Yoichiro Tateiwa sat down with a member of their nuclear reform monitoring committee. Lady Barbara Judge is a former chairman of the UK Atomic Energy Authority. She's an expert in corporate crisis management. TEPCO has asked her to help reform their corporate culture. My specific task has been to help them set up a a safety organization, a safety oversight organization within TEPCO, which will establish a new safety culture. Judge took up her role last September. She's seen a string of problems at Fukushima Daiichi since then. The power for the cooling system has failed twice, and workers have found contaminated water leaking on several occasions. Each time trouble occurred, TEPCO came under fire. Critics said the company was slow to disclose fact. Judge says it will take time to change but they're on the right track. TEPCO is now bringing in outsiders, asking them to look and see what's going on and to tell TEPCO the good things and the problems. And I think this fact of opening the doors and letting foreigners and outside experts come in shows that TEPCO wants to know what its problems are to the extent it can't identify them themselves and they want advice and they're looking for help. And that's the first step towards fixing things, recognizing the problems and opening the doors for help. Judge says TEPCO should disclose information swiftly, even if the full picture isn't clear. She says explaining risk without delay is the only way to win public confidence. You can't know the whole truth immediately. You have to only know half the truth. So we used to wait till we knew everything. Now we have to keep talking. And that, the Japanese and the rest of the world are going to have to learn how to get on the television or on the computer and say, this is what we know now. It may be this, or it may not be this. This is just what we know now. It may change. Judge says the nuclear industry as a whole will have to open their doors and become more international. She says there will be a global solutions in future and full disclosure is the only way forward. Work to remove debris from the disaster is proceeding as scheduled in some areas, but the cleanup isn't going so smoothly elsewhere. It's estimated that the disaster created nearly 26 million tons of debris in Iwate, Miyagi and Fukushima prefectures. The figure includes sediment that accumulated along the shorelines. 
Japanese government officials have set a target of March 2014 for completing all disposal operations. Under a program initiated by the Environment Ministry, Iwate and Miyagi are removing waste with help from other prefectures. 17 prefectures have agreed to accept 670,000 tons of debris. The remainder is being disposed of locally. Officials say Iwate and Miyagi should finish on schedule. But the cleanup is lagging in Fukushima. Parts of the prefecture were contaminated by radiation from the nuclear accident. The Environment Ministry plans to set a new deadline for Fukushima's cleanup by summer.